everybody, Jacob here. Welcome to the Fashion Bunker. Despite Chanel dramas happening from time to time, I still love my Chanel number no. 5. And today I'm doing a particular review of an endless classic. Now you know that I have reviewed Chanel number no. 5 many a times, but I'm dedicating this particular review to the Chanel number no. 5 Eau de Toilette. Oh, let's move in as close as possible. Look at that ambery golden yellow liquid. Delicious. Um, Chanel number no. 5 Eau de Toilette. Now, a lot of people think or ask themselves, what is the closest to the original formulation? Or they ask me very often, Jacob, what is the closest to the original formulation of Chanel number no. 5? Well, the original formulation of Chanel number no. 5 is the pure perfume, which I have here in spray form, which is, of course, my favorite. And I, I adore it using up my 7.5 ml. Anyway, um, this one was launched in 1921. Now again, speculation, myth, what, what have you, what want you. On some websites you're going to read that the Eau de Toilette was also launched in 1921. However, on other websites you will read that it was launched a year or two later. However, everybody states the same. The Eau de Toilette was launched right after the Pure Parfum. After the Eau de Toilette, cometh the Eau de Cologne, and then in the 80s, after, posthumously, to uh, Chanel's life, uh, in the 80s came the Eau de Parfum, formulated by Jacques Polge. After that, we got the Eau Première, which I'm not even showing here because I have, at the moment, a very conflicted relationship with Eau Première. I'm not liking it at all at the moment. And um, I'm not so sure if Jacques Polge or Olivier Polge, I think Olivier Polge, yes, definitely, I rectify. Olivier Polge is the nose behind the, in September 2016, launching uh, Lo Number no. 5, uh, which is kind of, I guess, the t Chanel trying to appeal to younger generations again, as they did, what, like a decade ago with Au Premier. Anyway, forget about that. Let's talk about this beautiful, magical creature. It has been reformulated. Yes, a lot of the ingredients since 2012 are either on a, an are on a list of extinction. Uh, some animals are not allowed to be used anymore. Um, I'm not so sure about the civet. I guess the civet as well, the glands of the butt of the civet. I know it sounds awful, but that's basically what <laughs> this one, uh, especially the pure perfume used to have. Now they have some chemical sub substitute for it. Um, also, some ingredients are considered to be, uh, you know, Producing allergies in people. Anyway, I would just put a freaking label on it saying this may cause allergies, buy it at your own risk instead of watering down a product. Yes, it does last shorter on the skin. Alas, it does. I have here also an Eau de Toilette pre-reformulation 2012. This one is from 2003-04. And uh, I will be putting them side by side just to test. So Ernest Beau is the nose behind uh, the Eau de Toilette. I'm going to do three sprays, guys. Oh, by the way, I would always suggest if you're going for the toilet, first of all, you're going to see little particles of stuff floating in there, even though it's a spray uh, and you can't access the liquid, which is a good sign, always in my book, a little bit of natural ingredients in there floating, hopefully at least. There's a magnet closure here for the 100 ml spray. I would suggest you buy the 100 ml spray. In the past, there used to be a splash up to 400 milliliter. I loved it, unfortunately discontinued. The cheapest, if you love the toilet, is to go for this bottle 100 ml because you also could purchase the 60 ml refillable, rechargeable, that costs even more and I don't know. I just want the perfume. This bottle looks good enough for me. So uh, this is how you get most liquid for your buck, basically, the biggest version of it. You could also get the 20 ml refillables. So it's like a 60 ml, like 20, 20, 20, but they cost more proportion wise per milliliter. So yeah, this is your cheapest way to go. Anyway, okay, now we have the splash still going super strong. This is, by the way, how I put my splash on. I literally seal off the bottle on my skin, flip it, and then rub it a little bit like that, and then we're good to go. Once the bottle is turned upside down on your skin, don't lift the bottle, guys. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, guys, girls and guys, so what are we talking about here? Male or female fragrance? As you know by now, who has been following me, there is no gender for perfumes, in my personal opinion. 
There's nothing more androgynous than Chanel number no. five. Honestly, it's not for women. It's not for men. It's not for human beings. It's for everything that wishes to smell divinely. Honestly, you're an alien. You're a rock. You want to try something amazing? Try Chanel number no. five. Let's get to the... Yeah, very different. I mean, completely Chanel number no. five. Don't get me wrong, guys. Uh, let's put them... This hand has this one. This hand has this one on. Uh, you totally recognize it. It's Chanel number no. five. It's the auto toilet, except the intensity is different. This one is lighter. It's more vague on the skin. You're going to need a lot more of it. I did three sprays. This one, you sense out the natural ingredients in there. I know it's an aldehyde perfume. I know Chanel number no. five was the first perfume where aldehydes were introduced in such a bombastic way and they were expensive back in the day. Now it's pretty cheap to, to produce them, I guess, with the technologies we have today. But this one, you know, whether it be the civet, whether it be the talc of the powder, the iris, the, the moss, whatever it is in here, it bonds the molecules well together and you have the feeling you're like sniffing into a, a treasure chest of, of, of ingredients. Here, they're all like, woo! all over the place you know maybe they're a little bit more aldehyde in that way because the aldehydes are supposed to resemble like sparkling bubbles of champagne or diamonds yes it's definitely there but it's not going to last on your skin as much as the old version ah super amazing okay so the ingredients as of today aldehydes as i just mentioned before bergamot is in the top notes as well as a Malfi lemon, Ilang Ilang, and Neroli. Then we move to the middle notes with Lily of the Valley, Rose. Now the rose is a particular rose, uh, as often said by sales associates of Chanel when I purchase the perfume, only the pure parfum has the grass um, roses and jasmines in it. The, all the other concentrations don't. So this one does not have the grass plantations that only belong to Chanel in it, unfortunately. Oris root, which smells a bit leathery. Uh, jasmine. Iris. The iris is way more present in the older formulation. Base notes. Oak moss, patchouli, sandalwood, musk, vetiver, the little civet, uh, vanilla, and amber. A lot of ingredients. It is also said that Chanel, as it came out, the first, first, first rendition of it had over 186 ingredients, but it was already too expensive back then to produce. They toned it down to around 83 to 86. As of now, I have no clue what's in here, guys. I mean, I still, you know, I discovered Chanel number no. 5 for myself when I was a kid uh, already in the 80s. Um, a little tidbit information about me. I was raised in New York. Ooh, there's a little... Scoop, <laughs> am I in New York right now? I don't know. I might be, or I might not be. Anyway, um, what's up with the voice? Um, it always smelled divinely to me. I was hooked from first sniff. So throughout all the years, you know, since I was a little teeny tiny toddler, I already loved Chanel number no. five to today. It's still amazing. I will still continue repurchasing new bottles, not just vintage, and I will keep on buying them and smelling them and finding ways to love them no matter how they reformulate it, just because the kind of soul and essence of it is still there. Is the IFRA a bastard of a company? In a way, they are, because um, it's a very dictatorial type of attitude to just like ban certain things. Um, if a certain animal is in danger of extinction, I totally agree. Totally. But certain plants having kind of like, you know, potential of uh, causing allergies uh, on people, you know, it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to run that risk. I don't want somebody else to decide for me. I want to be informed about, you know, the pros and the cons, but I want to have that final and ultimate decision at the end of the day. I think you would want that decision too, or the freedom to decide on your own. So the Chanel Number no. Five Eau de Toilette is an amazing perfume for summer. It's lighthearted. It doesn't have that suffocating, powdery depth of the pure perfume. It's still, it's it's still 
the iris is still there and it kind of blocks here and you get a, a whiff of like you freeze for a second and then like your the normal airflow keeps going right after that so that's still happening in the uh, Eau de Toilette 2016 version my batch number by the way is 0301 the old bottle I have from like 2004 or 5 whatever it was or 3 4 and you know that Chanel repeats their batch numbers. So this one is 1001. It's so dense. Um, it's, it's different. What can I say? It's super different from this one. I wonder, however, how this perfume is going to react to time. Because as you can see, I'm already using it. And I've had it for like a week or two. And it's kind of, you know, I'm using it quite well. So I don't know if it's going to live as long as this one. This one I stopped using at a certain point and now I treasure it because it's it's my old bottle. Um, so I wonder if this one will time with time will become more intense. I told you in a video before, I like to put my Chanel number no. five perfumes in the sunlight. I know this is crazy. A lot of people say don't ever do that with perfumes, but it, it makes them, it causes them to become more intense. This one has been in the sun often and it's becoming very ambery and I'm loving much more the smell of it now uh, than I did before when it was new out of the box it would last really shortly on the skin kind of even though depending on the weather outside if it's very hot weather it lasts less if it's cold weather it lasts longer on the skin this is also something to take consideration of but uh, it's become more concentrated with with time and now the uh, Eau de Parfum is amazing I love the powdery note in this one super 80s 1983, I think, was the year was launched. You could imagine the opulence of the 80s. It's still there, even though this one is watered down compared to what it used to be in the 80s. But still, it gives you that zhuzh and that verve of the 80s. Um, this one is more timeless. It definitely is more 20s. Definitely. And it's a fun 20s. It's 20s that look into the future. It's the 20s that have no freaking clue that there's going to be a Second World War gonna, uh, coming soon. Oddly enough, the pure perfume does give me that vibe from time to time. Like there's something, something is a brewing, something is a going on with Europe. This one, no, this one is just fabulously bubbly and champagne-y. This is the most fabulous of Chanel Number no. 5 perfumes because even though I love Number no. 5 Parfum the most, this one is the most fabulous. If Adina and Patsy from AbFab were to use Chanel, it would be Chanel number no. five Eau de Toilette, just because it's frizzy, it's bubbly, it's lighthearted. It's like, woo, where's the party? Oh my God, sweetie darling, I'm going in that direction. Certain drugs were also still legal back in the day. So you could imagine also rushing off to the bathroom, powdering your nose, coming back, and you know, everything is totally bizarrely, lightheartedly a party an effervescent party of something that will become decadent and will transform into perfume. But for now, there is no decadence. For now, it's so lighthearted that nobody really cares. And that lightheartedness not caring is what the essence of Chanel No. 5 Eau de Toilette is. I have to say even more so in this new rendition, 2016, because it's so fresh and young and some ingredients, some deeper natural ingredients are lacking it becomes even more like 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 popping little you know bubbles all over you all around you and i'm loving it the dry down is amazing you're not going to really like this one right out of the the sprayer you're not going to like it because it's going to give you the feeling of being very distant from your skin it's a strange thing like you smell it off the skin after you right after you just after spraying it on your skin and you're going to feel like the perfume is somewhere there, not really here. It's, and that's what this, that's this strange feeling we get with these newer formulations of perfumes with the IFRA regulations. You're gonna, that's what makes us say, oh, it's been watered down. It literally doesn't pop in your nose, you know? It, it, it kind of stays somewhere else. And you have the feeling, you've sprayed it here, but you're hunting it. You, you don't know where it really is. It's kind of evading you. But if you give it that time to kind of settle in a little and to, to bond in some way if possible with your own chemistry and your own skin, then you're going to get this, this beautiful, beautiful memory of what Chanel No. 5 Eau de Toilette used to be. And it's still there. 
it's still there and it makes me want to celebrate life. Lately, I've been through thick and thin job-wise and there was a lot of stress in my life and boy, have I been on the brink of verge of a nervous breakdown of depression of this or of that. I would just smell my Chanel number no. five and, you know, it would just give me like a high, a, a fix, if you will. This is kind of the legal drug that's still out there because it would just make me, every time I smell it, I forget for a nanosecond my worries and my sorrows. And yes, that's what perfume should be. And that's what perfume is to me. And that's why perfume is genderless because it's not about underlining your sex, your sexuality, meaning gender, not being sexy. Perfumes should underline being sexy as well. Not only, but also. But this one underlines a sort of freedom and lightheartedness. And it has nothing to do with gender. Why should a woman or a man deprive themselves from something that is so amazing and mesmerizing? Nobody should ever deprive themselves from it. I surround myself with a lot of perfumes. And actually, that's another topic for another video, perhaps. But I've been layering a lot of stuff. Not layering over one top of each other, but like here, one perfume, there, another one, here, one, there, one, here, here, one, on the chest, another one. Like, I am literally on a perfume high right now. This summer is crazy. I've been experimenting so much. I really need to make a video on that topic. But back to uh, Eau de Toilette. It's so lighthearted and it just makes you want to, you know, spray it more and more and more. It's it's like, it's just like, and I literally, you see what I mean? Like, I don't care about the quantity. I could like take a shower with this thing. The more the better. It's, it's crazy and I'm probably going to go through this bottle like, ah, like with a straw done in a month. But you live only once and you better enjoy it. And I want to live it to full capacity. And yes, it has been watered, it has been watered down. So just wash yourself with it. Cloying in summer? No, it's not. It, it gives you the feeling, even though it's powdery, so it's clean and soapy on some skins or more floral on other skins. On my skin, it, 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 it gives me leather. It gives me that orris root. It gives me that smoky touch of leather. It does give me the jasmine and the rose as well. But it mostly gives me the iris at the powdery note and touch, which just makes me thrilled. You know, it gives me like a, like a tiny olfactory within the nose, like orgasm over and over again. So yes, I'm loving Chanel number no. five Eau de Toilette. I always have. I wonder why I haven't reviewed it yet. Mm. Now, interesting note. Look, 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 look. 100 ml uh, Dior Addict bottle and the Chanel number no. five Eau de Toilette, 100 ml. Aren't they similar in shape and length? And look at the bottom. Like, they don't have just a square. You know, Chanel is famous for the slightly rounded shape. They do have four uh, edges and corners, but uh, it's slightly rounded. And uh, that's what Dior is doing, too. Now, I know that uh, Dior Addict was already out back in, what, 2003, 4? But uh, this one was out in uh, the 20s. Now, this bottle doesn't exist in the 20s, but... Already we have in the 80s, even in the 50s and prior, we have this rounded shapes here. So Dior kind of copied Chanel a little bit, wouldn't you say? Look at this. Huh. Even the thickness of the bottles is exactly the same. Shocking. Anyway, two very different fragrances. But there's a, been a little bit of a copying here. Who's, I mean, you know, this one might, because it came... This particular bottle with the magnet came out after this one did. However, this one doesn't have the magnet. This one does. I'm loving this magnet. This one is just a classic spray. But if you don't remember, the original Addict had a twist thing. You couldn't lift this little thing. There was a little twister here that would kind of unlock the spray within. Anyway, just a little trivia on your perfume knowledge. Um, ah. Get your nose into Chanel number no. five, Eau de Toilette, guys, because it's a party perfume and it's a fresh party. You could even be, you know, I'm dreaming of going on a holiday. I don't have any time. I'm overloaded with work, so I'm probably going to be working all summer and maybe hopefully fingers crossed in autumn going somewhere. But this does give me a vibe of being at the pool, you know, under shade, a lot of shade. I don't like the sun. 
and they just spray this and it's just like vapors of freshness just covering you and you feel the breeze moving through and with every whiff of breeze you get the whiff of the perfume on you it's just that delicious guys okay enough of my blabbering i hope you like this review and my enthusiasm for number five eau de toilette and i hope it's <laughs> it's kind of a uh, intoxicating in a positive way and uh yes share this video if you liked it let me know what you think about Chanel number no. 5. I know a lot of you are really not happy about the watering down of the formulations, but nevertheless, do you still sense out the soul in this perfume or you don't? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, let me know what your favorite summer fragrances are. And uh, I said before, share this video. I did. I'll be repeating it again. Share it. Thumb it up, please. And um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So, no matter what Chanel number no. 5 formulation and concentration you choose to go with, I am sure that wearing it, you will even more so never give up on love. Love you guys. See you soon. Bye.